All right. Do not limit God. This word is possibly for you. Because if you want to have a miracle in your life, a breakthrough in your life, and you're wondering why things have not yet happened, why it has taken so long, why there has been so much delay, it could be that you have limited God in your words, in your confessions. Your lifestyle can limit God. Your tradition can limit God. The way that you think about things, it can be a limitation to God's word. And sometimes you may say, oh no, I've been doing this for a long time. I've, uh, my, my church has been practicing this. This is what my parents, my father say. This is what my relatives say. This is what my friends say. That thing could be a limitation to God's power operating in you. And you need to recognize it. You need to identify what uh, trait, what action, what words limit God. And some of you may not know that God can be limited with your words. And I'm going to show you in the scripture. These things are written so that we may know, so that we may learn from them. Now, I want us to go to the book of uh, Psalms 78, 41. Psalms chapter 78 verse 41 and it reads yes again and again they tempted god and limited the holy one of israel that's what the scripture says that they tempted god again and again and they limited the holy one of israel they limited him through their words their actions, their lifestyles, their rebellion against the word of God. When God sends out forth his word, be quick to receive it. Do not wait a long time. Because that waiting and thinking about it, it could be a limitation. Act on the word. When God tells you to do something, do it and do it very fast. Now, I want us to read uh, another scripture that is in the book of Mark 7, 13. Mark chapter 7, verse 13. And it reads, Thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handled that you have handed down and you do many things like that. Scripture says that you have nullified the word of God by your tradition. I'll read you another translation that says, uh, And so you cancel the word of God in order to, to hand down your own tradition and this is only one example among others one translation says you nullify another translation says you cancel you cancel now the new king james version says making the word of god of no effect through your tradition which you have handed down and many such things you do so that means tradition can make the word of god be of no effect it nullifies the word of god look at uh, uh, the pharisees the teachers of the law through their traditions they made the word of god of no effect they nullified the word of God. Traditions could be things that you have uh, been practicing in your culture. I know some of you have cultures. Things that have been passed on in your culture. It could be even a church system. That is what your doctrine. That is the doctrine that you follow. So do not base the word of God 
on certain a, a certain doctrine or do not be uh, glued to a man of God that he becomes the word. Let the word of God speak for itself. That's why you see I encourage people to read the scriptures for themselves. Do not uh, have a doctrine for yourself. Let the word of God be its own word that speaks to you. If the word of God says to do this, then do it. Do not follow systems that have been placed by men. Because those systems can be a place where they put you into bondage. Those traditions. You know? Now, I want us to read uh, another powerful scripture that is in the book of uh, Matthew 13, 58. Matthew chapter 13, verse 58. And it reads, And he did not do many miracles there because of the, their lack of faith. And now the, this book talks about Jesus. That Jesus could not do many miracles. He did not do many miracles. Some translation says he could not do many miracles because of their lack of faith. Other says because of their unbelief. So, Sometimes God wants, to, in fact, most things, God wants, to, all the times, God wants to uh, rescue you, wants to deliver you. He's willing to deliver you, to rescue you, to bring you out of that pit, to bring forth a miracle in your life. But because of unbelief, because of lack of faith, it restrains him. It, it nullifies the word. So that's why see, it's important to be in a place where it's not a toxic environment. That's why you see Jesus, when he was about to heal somebody, he first, he first had to draw him away from that city and take him out of that city. Then he healed him outside the city. Why couldn't he heal him inside the city? Because inside the city, it was a point where maybe it was a point where he would go backwards. It was a point of limitation, a point of old things. So he had to bring him out of that. God is about to rescue you. He's about to break you out of that uh, bondage, of that uh, pit that has held you down. Some of you have been suffering for so long. But all you can do is to believe, to have faith in God. Do not question the word of God. Scripture says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So the more you hear the word of God, the more you receive that faith. The more you receive the faith. And the same is to fear. Fear, fear. The people say that uh, fear is the opposite of faith. And fear also comes by hearing and hearing the, the word of the enemy. If you continue hearing uh, news that creates fear, then fear will come into your mind. If you continue hearing news about danger, news about horrific things, then fear will be attracted to you. And remember, for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So do not allow fear to be in your life. Let faith rule you. Because faith pleases God. God is not pleased by your emotions. He is not moved by your emotions. He is not pleased so much by your works. But it is faith. Faith pleases God. Well, I thank everyone who has uh, liked this video and those who are sharing this video. 
May God bless you. Go ahead and uh, leave your comments. Let me know. Uh, if you have a prayer request, I will pray for you. Now, until next time, be blessed.